Here's another Cyrus uh, project and we're going to look at the MC bus and this is where we connect the different units together and then uh, one of the units can control the others uh, uh, so your remote control operates several units at the same time uh, and uh, so I've got these two units here connected up I've got a, a single Mono X here and I'm using a Cyrus 7 uh, connected to that uh, and what we see is if, if we power on the uh, amplifier here then we'll see the Mono X comes on also uh, so that's working in sympathy there so that's our MC bus operation and it works as a master slave uh, configuration if I try and power the Mono X on its own it just powers that unit it doesn't uh, affect the, the master unit at all uh, and I started looking at this because someone uh, popped up and said you know I've got a 12 volt trigger on some of my other units and I'd like to be able to power up my Cyrus power amps from that how can I do it, uh, you know is there a cable or any simple way to do that uh, and the simple answer is no um, and uh, we'll dig into that uh, and uh, see if we can come up with a solution to get around the difficulties let's first take a look at what Cyrus say Here's the Cyrus web page then, and I've just looked up this MC bus cables here. Uh, you, I mean, you'll find information on the MC bus and all the products here, but this has just got a there's a basic description down here if we look at it. And what we see is that uh, we talk about data cables, uh, and uh, so this allows us to connect the MC bus between the different Cyrus uh, units, um, and we talk about a complete data loop that's formed between the different components uh, and this allows us to power on and off and, and different functions so this is a data uh, network we've got here so a, a simple you know 12 volt supply a uh, trigger line from any other unit you know it's not gonna it's, it's just not gonna be of any use at all um, and of course this data is going to be Cyrus specific it's not something we can look up it's not any standard we know about um, so it gives us a bit of a headache in trying to trying to control these things uh, uh, by our own means um, but let's uh, we'll connect up this bus we'll, we'll look at the bus on the scope and we'll look at uh, what data is going on and then think about what we can do to, to uh, try and uh, come up with a solution to uh, control this ourselves. Right here we are I've got a scope connected to the MC bus and I've got a little made a little breakout box here or just a breakout connector really that lets me tap the MC bus out and MC bus in. Um, so we're looking at uh, channel one of the scope here we're looking at the MC bus out and while the unit's in standby that's sitting at a steady 5 volt logic level there. Now if I do a single trigger on my scope and then we uh, turn the unit on we can see that we've got a whole bunch of digital data there going on uh, and uh, we can zoom in on that and look at the look at the content but obviously quite a, a complex arrangement uh, simply to turn this thing on uh, and if we then turn on channel 2 of the scope this is looking at the MC bus out and what we see is an echo uh, the, the data that we're sending in uh, comes out 10 bits later uh, and uh, just ripples through the system and if the controller doesn't see the echo then it stops at the first command it just uh, doesn't go any further and nothing happens so we, we need this sort of complete uh, system uh, to, to actually make this thing effective um, so quite involved as I say and uh, not so trivial to, to uh, uh, really do anything with and clearly uh, you know a, a, dis a, a discrete 12 volt uh, trigger line is not going to do anything for us here absolutely nothing at all so um, but we can we can dig into this we can uh, zoom in on this and we can actually uh, decode this data we can look at what this uh, what this is doing for us uh, and uh, so if we uh, just scroll through this uh, and let's go to our first byte of data there here we are so uh, it goes to logic zero and the way I've got it set up here is one division on the scope is one bit roughly and so I can see I've got five zeros in a one zero one and then we get a long period uh, before the next uh, byte of data there 
Um, so we can work through that and uh, uh, decode this thing. We can come up with a sequence that's going on here. And I mean, there, there's easier ways to do this. If we had a logic analyzer, we could just read the thing off. Um, but this this is not any kind of standard. It's, it's just asynchronous uh, data. Um, uh, obviously, just a state machine in the in the main unit that's doing this. But we can work through this and uh, do our own kind of decoding of this sequence. And of course, I've done this and I've been through and uh, uh, figured this stuff out. Uh, so we can see uh, the five zeros one zero one. In this case, that results uh, as a code of zero five in hex, and we can work through. Uh, the, the rest of the sequence to come up with the, the whole uh, list of bytes of data there. And then my thinking is, if we can then uh, program a microcontroller, uh, so I've got an Arduino here, if we can con uh, program this to spit out this same uh, sequence of data, we should then be able to use that to turn on and off our uh, uh, power amplifiers. So I've said a few times that this thing's unlikely to be following any standard. You know, it's going to be Cyrus uh, specific. And when I say that, I'm specifically talking about the actual data that's being transferred. Um, the actual serial bus itself is a classic UART architecture, um, very similar to RS-232 and these kind of things. Just a single wire serial uh, bus for low uh, a, or small amounts of data, low data rates. Uh, and uh, so you know you can look this up and uh, we can see we've we've got a start bit our data and then the uh, stop bits etc and this is this is absolutely classic stuff um, so this is what's happening here uh, so let's go and uh, look at the code that we need to do to implement uh, a similar thing here's the beginning of uh, my Arduino code then and uh, we can see I'm just uh, setting some variables here uh, and then what I've done is I've uh, created a, an array just having all this uh, hex data, all the all the bytes of data that we've decoded just using the scope. Um, so we've got that in array just to keep it manageable, keep it clean there. Uh, and then I've got some setup stuff here. So I set up my input and output pins and I'm setting my digital output pin to be logic one. So that represents the sort of five volt uh, steady state that we saw on the MC bus. So we do that and then we go into our main program there and what I'm going to do initially is we'll, we'll trigger this code from the MC bus and I want to do that so that I can look at what the actual Cyrus unit is doing and what our code is doing. We can kind of look at them and they should overlap and that's going to help us to debug some of this stuff because Sure, there's uh, going to be some errors in these uh, values that we've done here. Uh, so we'll do that. And uh, uh, what we're doing here, once we trigger, is that we just work through each of these bytes at a time. So that's what this loop is doing, uh, just working through them. And uh, for each byte, what we then do is we work through each bit. So we work through each, each of the eight bits at a time and we write those bits to the output pin that we've selected um, and uh, so that should then give us the same uh, a sequence that we see on the MC bus. So we'll uh, go and uh, load this up now and we'll put this in parallel with the MC bus and uh, see how it compares. Alright, so we're connected to our Arduino here and I'm using the MC bus to trigger the code that we just looked at and then we'll look at the two traces on the scope here. Um, this is the MC bus and then the output of our Arduino code. And if I, uh, let's let's do a single capture here. If I turn the unit on, we can see what we get. Our two traces here. Uh, and if we zoom in, let's look at our start bit. There it's there. Um, and so the falling edge of this yellow trace triggers the Arduino code and that gives us the green trace. Uh, and you can see we're matching there. Uh, and if we go along, uh, you, you know, it takes me a few times to get this right, but uh, uh, everything's matching now. And you can see that there is a difference in the, uh, the actual timing of when these pulses occur. And that's just because I've used a complete number of bytes for, for this uh, dead time here. 
um, for whatever reason, the Cyrus code is a variable variable time in there. But just to make my code neater, um, I do this, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the performance because we're working with a asynchronous system. So again, you can see that that matches, and uh, we go along, and uh, these two match, and so it goes. Um, so that's say uh, doing uh, what we what we expect it to do, and. So I've got a phono connector here, and uh, let's now connect our MC bus uh, that's controlling the the bottom unit here. We'll connect it to that and see how we got on. Right, so now I've got the MC bus out that's controlling the bottom unit here. That's now coming from the Arduino. That's via this connection here. And so the only thing I'm doing with the controller is triggering the code in this uh, unit. And I've also disconnected the MC bus in from the top unit. So there's no longer a complete loop um, that we need with the Cyrus system. And so if I do a, a single capture now, uh, and we turn the top unit on, we get our... Uh, we don't we, Because the uh, MC bus loop is not complete, we don't get a full uh, set of data on the top trace. We just get the, the f first uh, byte but we do see our complete set of data uh, coming from the Arduino and our amp has powered up. So that's working just fine, triggering this and uh, taking that data from the Arduino is uh, able, to, able to control the unit. So that's, that's good, that's a good uh, building block, good progress. Um, so I need to now do the same routine for uh, turning the unit off and uh, what I'll do is uh, we'll set up a little switch on the Arduino here, and we'll use that to toggle the uh, MC bus. We're making good progress now. So I've I've added my switch off routine to my Arduino code, um, and it, obviously we've lost a lot of the setup here. So I've only got a single line coming from uh, this Ar Arduino uh, going into the MC bus into one of these units, and then either, these are chained together. These are two mono X's chained together. And if I press and hold this button, we can see that the Mono X is powered up uh, and they remain powered until I let go of the button. So that's just working exactly as we need. And so I'll go now and replace the switch with uh, just a 12 volt uh, input from a power supply. Here we are with a 12 volt trigger set up then. So I'm using a 12 volt power supply to trigger my Arduino this time and there uh, we can see the voltage on the DMM there. So if I turn on the source, 12 volts, and you can see Mono X's have powered up. And uh, remove the 12 volts and we power down. So that's absolutely what we're looking for. Uh, now, obviously this is uh, a bit uh, cumbersome here. We need to try and miniaturize this somehow and put it into some sort of presentable form. Uh, so that's my next step. So I've been using this Arduino Uno for developing this thing here. Um, this is just a convenient package for doing that. It's a bit big and cumbersome though, unless you're you're you know got a big enclosure uh, to fit the thing in. So it's just a bit big and cumbersome for any kind of final uh, solution. Uh, and normally what you would do is flip to using something like the Nano, a much smaller package. And I've used these a lot, um, but in this case we'd still have to add our power supply circuitry. And uh, some, uh, you know, circuitry for the detection of the trigger line, etc. So there'd have to be some extras around this, which makes it a bit cumbersome again and not so tidy. Um, so what I decided to do was do a dedicated board, uh, and this is obviously some time later because I've got this board made and uh, assembled and tested, etc. Here, so I'm using an AT Tiny 85 here. Uh, uh, just an eight-pin device, and you can, can you can program using that using the Arduino Uno, uh, so it's very convenient. Uh, and then there's a bunch of circuitry on this board uh, to act as a power supply, and the power supply actually comes from the trigger input, and then there's the trigger detect as well, uh, and so everything's on there, and a single output going to our MC bus in on our power amps. Uh, so that's the board, and uh, I've put this in a, a nice uh, die-cast enclosure here, a similar finish to the, the black Cyrus units actually. And I've got a 3.5mm input um, for the trigger, and I've also got a USB-C connector, just because I don't know what current availability is going to be on that trigger line. 
Now this thing only draws a few milliamps, but just given that on low enough, put the USB-C on there also, and we can also use that to, to trigger uh, the thing. A uh, single RCA on the output, as we mentioned. Um, so let's see who gets up to our amps and see how it behaves. All right, here we are with the uh, unit set up here, and I've got it connected to a pair of Mono X 300s this time. Uh, and uh, if I apply my, I'm going to use a 12 volt trigger here. You can see that in the DMM, and as soon as we get the 12 volts, the units power up, quite happy. Uh, and if I remove the trigger, then they, they uh, switch off. Um, and it, it, you know, uh, uh, this doesn't necessarily need 12 volts. I can cover quite a wide range of voltages here. So let me drop it down to 5 volts. And uh, let's try again. So there we are. All quite happy at that. Uh, and power down. So that's working just uh, perfectly. So I mentioned we can also use a USB and I've got this USB-C connector on the unit here. Uh, and uh, this uh, covers a few functions here, but for, for myself, I, I like to power everything off at the mains and then uh, just flick the one switch to power everything on. Uh, and of course my, my amps come up in standby, so that's a real nuisance. Uh, and so if I've got a USB uh, power supply of some description, I can plug it into this and just switch that on with everything else and it will then bring the power amps up. So I'm just going to use a power bank here to show this. Uh, so if I plug into the power bank, and what I've done is included a 5 second delay in this one. Uh, just to give the, any units the, the chance to uh, go through their s sort of start-up routine. And there you can see we've powered up quite happily. And then if I remove my USB, we power down. So that's working uh, just uh, as we were looking for there. And so gives us quite a, a nice little accessory um, for a, a, a powering up our, our amplifiers. Uh, and of course, now that we know the kind of code uh, in, in this, that we need to supply the MC bus, we can, you know, essentially trigger trigger it with anything, anything that we really want to. So there we are, nice little uh, Cyrus accessory for uh, helping us power up our power amplifiers if you're not using other Cyrus equipment as your controllers.